What's up guys? How's it going? I'm going to go over and uh, talk about how to draw the neck. You know the neck connecting the torso. So let's do that really quick. First thing about the neck is let's just say, let's say that's the rib cage, right? I'm starting with that simple shape for the rib cage, circle, whatever. Uh, I tend to think of the rib cage as a kind of a sphere, you know, if I was to simplify it down. And there's a lot of different things you can think about. You don't have to think about it this way. I'm just saying this is one way to think about it. The neck, I almost always think of it as a cylinder sitting on top of that. You know what I mean? That's the first thing, first basic shape that I think about when I think of the neck, a cylinder. Um, there are other ways to improve upon that, though. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess it's kind of a given. But another way to think about that, and this is when you want to get a little bit more detailed, a little bit more. I think of the neck, again, still as a cylinder. and But I have the, the traps sticking out of it. The trapezius muscles, which are, you know, in the back and go up to the neck in the back of the skull. And those really come out. You know what I mean? So I think of that a little differently as well. I think of that shape, you know, depending on how big, how big and thick the neck is going to be. Um, for example, let's say he's the neck is bending to the right. So that's the, let's say that's the head, by the way. Hope that's clear. Let's say the neck is bending to the right, like that, right? I would. draw the neck like a cylinder maybe going down or going wide it doesn't really matter it depends on the body type and then I would draw the activating side of the trapezius like that see how it's squeezing together and then the other side would be a little more flat or concave almost you know a little bit like that slight dip and it would be the same way the other way too if I was, if the, the neck was turning the other direction, let's say like this, uh, somewhere le somewhere up. <clears throat> this somewhere up, uh, let's say this is the front of the head. The neck was turning that way. I'll take, I'll take care of it the same way. Draw it downward, draw it as a tube, and then have this side activated, the side he's pushing towards, he or she is pushing towards, and then the other side not activated. You know what I mean? Hopefully that makes sense a little bit. But um, really think about it like you're pushing... It really does make sense, you know, all, of, all these muscles are pushing together as you're pu pushing the neck that way. And this is not activated. Uh, <clears throat> another thing, let's talk about the front of the neck. The front of the neck has a few uh, key muscles in it that I've noticed. Um, oh, also, just here's a really quick thing, right? For a guy's neck, and if you're talking about generic guy, everybody changes, right? Depends who you are. That looks like a bodybuilder right here. That's a huge neck. But for a girl, a girl's neck would be much thinner. And that's just an obvious thing, but I thought I should just point it out. A girl's neck would be much thinner. You don't throw no Adam's apple in there. You know what I mean? Much thinner, more elegant. You know what I mean? Maybe more like that shape. Guy's neck would be huge. I mean, again, it's like a guy superhero, you know? And you don't have to make it like that. A regular neck would probably be in between those, you know, for a guy. Um, <clears throat> another thing to remember about the neck is there's this bit of skin that actually comes off from the bottom of the chin and that's kind of the, where the neck connects to. Let's say you have somebody looking off in that direction. So that's the front of his face. And this is the back of the skull. Right? Let's say you have that. There's always going to be 
people tend to like I don't know why get rid of this but there's gonna be a little bit of skin from the bottom of the neck no matter what it's not like a double chin or anything it's kinda like that where that would be but you know you kinda pull it back and then um, it pulls down a little bit into maybe the Adam's apple if you're a guy like I said and so I'm gonna highlight this area and then the back of the ear let's say would be over here So you have this area, let's say I'm gonna I'm just gonna shade that area real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. This area behind the neck is something that I swear <laughs> I would say almost every single artist uh in the beginning, very very beginning, ignores. You gotta remember this area of skin back here. Because it's gonna really it's gonna make it, it's gonna give you that realism that you need, I think. Um absolutely. Because I see it missing a lot from people's drawings. And uh you the back of the neck over here. All right. One other thing about the neck. Here's another tip to go over. Uh, we gotta go over the cords of the uh, the muscles in the neck. Oh, not. I mean, there's two cords. There's a sternocleidomastoid, and that goes from behind the ear. And you see these all the time on superheroes, by the way. It goes from behind the ear all the way down to the pit of the neck area. You know, and they kind of connect in two locations. But um, <clears throat> that's the biggest thing. Just imagine. Uh, the way I like to think about it, and then put the Adam's apple in here. The way I think about that muscle, sternocleidomastoid, I think it's sternocleidomastoid, or mastoideus. Uh, sorry about that, I don't have an anatomy book in front of me. Is uh, the way I think about that muscle is I think about it, and this is the way I see it shaped in my mind, by the way. So I think about it. shaped like that you know what I mean but it has like let's say this thickness to it I think about it shaped like that see it kind of connects in two parts but see let's say this, this goes to the back of the neck over here I'm mean, sorry back of the ear but I see that wrapped around it's almost like a slug or something like that wrapped around the neck you know the outside of the neck and um, from the back of the ear to the pit of the neck that's the way I think about it I really do. Anyways, those are some quick tips on the neck and how to draw the neck. Uh, remember, remember some keys. Uh, I'm going to go over it really quick again. One more time. Uh, I think of the neck as a cylinder. That's the first initial thing I think of when I'm blocking things out. Cylinder. Then I add the shoulders to the cylinder. The shoulders, which is uh, not the shoulders, but the trapezius muscles, which are, I guess, the, sh the shoulders are over here. The tra traps are right here. Muscles from the back. Uh, if you, whichever way you lean, it's going to activate, you know what I mean? So it's going to form more of a ball. And then the other side will relax. Female necks are skinnier. You know what I mean? That's just a given. They are skinnier. Uh, we have the sternocleidomastoid, which I feel, uh, has a cool, like I said, rounded shape to it. it. looks like a slug wrapping on the skin. And, uh, do not forget, the most important thing ever, do not forget the, play, the, the area of the neck that is behind the jaw here, behind the jaw, and kind of encompasses, goes down to the Adam's apple, like especially in profile too. Do not forget that. And uh, that's about it. Those are some quick tips on drawing the neck. Uh, I honestly feel if you remember those, it's going to improve your uh, overall people, you know, your drawings of people uh, a lot because they're going to have these little details that, you know, like I said, some artists don't put in. But anyways, that's it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate these uh, the support. And uh, please get my channel um, out there. I would love to, to have more followers and, and, and talk to more people in a larger audience. Please share this on Facebook. Share this on any, maybe anywhere. I do appreciate it. See you later, guys. And uh, talk to you soon.